we're back. It has been um, about 24 hours, so now the wax is totally cool and it's time to divest the alginate and start learning about, um, about wax welding and sprues. So this, uh, this chapter will be um, divesting alginate, wax welding, and sprues. So before we get started with the actual wax welding, I just want to show you the tools that I've assembled. Um, both the tools that are in your toolbox, as well as the communal tools that you can use during class and then sterilize before um, the end of class time. So for the tools in your toolbox, we have the, um, the carving tools for wax or for clay. I have my straight edge exacto box cutter. And then I have some of the wooden tools that are in the toolbox. And then there are some shared wooden tools that you should also feel free to use. Just make sure that you treat them pro properly um, and put them back clean. Uh, for the shared tools that you're gonna wanna use for this um, assignment, you are going to want to grab, um, for wax welding, the Fordham Wax Carver. It lives in the yellow consumables cabinet. And you're also going to want to make sure that you have access to an outlet. I have a surge protector strip here, but there are outlets all over the ceiling as well. Um, I have a little um, silicone pot that I'm going to use both for uh, the wax welding portion, and then I'll show you a little later how we use these to make sprues out of. I've grabbed a little mold release. Both of these things, um, you don't necessarily have to grab right at the beginning. They can live over by the wax area. Um, I've grabbed a little painter's tape and I'll show you how I use that in a second. And then I've also grabbed a tea light and then some matches. And we'll use these for the wax welding as well. Uh, you'll also see that I have a coddle. And this coddle, I have used one of the class's shared Lazy Susans, and I've taped it to the bottom. That's what the tape is for. So then while I'm wax working, I can move the wax around, um, but I'll have to do that when my tools are out of the way because otherwise they'll all get knocked to the floor. Um, I think that this is all I need, but I can almost guarantee you that I'm gonna wanna grab something. So just bear with me. This is a good starting setup. So let's divest our alginates. The first one that we'll divest is, um, what was this one of? Oh, the cup, that's great. Uh, we'll pause for a second and I'll just pull the camera closer so you can see what's happening exactly. All right, so now, unfortunately you don't have a view of my magnificent face, but you do have a view of, um, <laughs> of the wax and the alginate. So clearly there was a lot of overflow on this. That's fine, we just let it harden. You can clear it off when it's a little softer, but it's not necessary. You can just let it harden this way if you want to. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just pull this top off because it's really fun. This wax is, um, is uncontaminated and therefore recyclable. So I'm gonna make a little pile off camera. Uh, it's, it's cold, so I'm not worried about it messing up the table. And we'll just recycle it in the wax bin in a moment or two or three or four or five. So little pile of clean wax, ready to go back in the wax pot. And then because we know that this is an object that doesn't have any undercuts, we can probably just wiggle it right out. And look at that, really nice. I have a little towel here. It's nice and cool, so I'm not worried about my hands um, making any marks on the wax. And what you can see is that there's really beautiful detail and it's solid. So it's a little bit of a weirdo transformed object. So I'm just gonna put that over here and I'm gonna show you the alginate, which you can see is like really weeping a lot of water, but it hasn't been damaged at all. So this is a opportunity where you can use this alginate again to get another mold. Uh, just know that every time you pour a wax in like every subsequent time you use an alginate, um, your wax won't be exactly the same because the alginate is, sh is shrinking as it's losing water. Uh, so we'll do that in a moment. I'll just put this off to the side. So that was a very easy divest and the mold has stayed intact. So that's very cool. I'm gonna give this a little wipe off and we'll come to the hand. 
which is, I guarantee you, not going to be um, not going to be a mold that we can reuse. We're actually going to have to tear the alginate away. So you can see that shrinkage that's, that I was talking about really clearly in the bucket. Um, so the alginate has lost a lot of water. It's pouring out. I'm going to pour it out into the garbage right here. It's probably even better to do that into the slot bucket, but that's not available for me right now. And then I'm going to invert it. Oh. I'll put the bucket off to the side to be cleaned. There's still a little wax on the bucket and I just want to make sure that before I put it away, I clean that. And now I have this really delicious um, looking cake thing. And I like to divest where I can see the sprue so I can get a sense of, um, of the object inside. So I remember that my hand was sort of shaped like this inside in that orientation. So I'm gonna to start to carve away gently. It cuts really easily. And I'm gonna make a slice and pull. And what I wanna make sure that I'm doing is pulling gently enough where I'm not going to tear my wax. So I know that the most delicate portion of this wax is gonna be this pointer finger. So I'm gonna tear away these chunks. They go right in the garbage at the top first and begin to reveal the more delicate portion of the hand. Tearing gently. You can see that hand is beginning to emerge. Pretty cool. When I'm making my slits with the box cutter, I'm not going all the way into, going all the way through the alginate because I want to preserve the wax. I don't want to actually cut it. So now we can see the beginnings of the fingers here. I think if I touch the screen, it might color balance a little better, but I think it'll be all right. It's making a really great sort of tearing sound that I'm enjoying. pretty slippery on the coddle, so I'm taking some care not to let it go flying off. Tearing, chunks away, wedging my thumb into the cut, pulling, make another cut here all the way down, wedging my thumb into the cut and pulling. trying to reveal the back of the hand first because there's a potential that I can just wiggle out the rest of the hand once I've sort of freed all these undercuts. And then this is really a moment where we can see if the pour went well and sort of cross our fingers, knack, 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 so to speak. I'll give the object a little wiggle. It still seems to be pretty locked in, so I'm not going to pull too hard knowing that that finger is pretty delicate. Another wiggle, still a little locked in. Revealed my thumb. I think that the alginate here is actually locked because there's a sort of grasping of my fist. So I'm going to try to release from there gently because now I'm revealing that finger. And we look like we're pretty good on the fill, which is very exciting. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Got a little good feeling of a loose tooth going on here. It's almost time for the tooth fairy. I'm gonna cut here carefully not to puncture the wax. Though if you do touch the wax, it's actually not that big a drama because um, you can, you can uh, sort of sculpt that scar off, so to speak. Um, but like I said in one of the earlier videos, the the sort of more pristine you can make your wax initially, the less sort of, the less work you do on the back end, the better it is. Um, I'm just gonna keep popping this off. I've re revealed the finger, so I'm gonna keep sort of gently working that area to make sure that I don't exert too much pressure to, ooh, look at that, loose enough tooth where I think I can 
free it. You can see that I'm really taking care here, um, knowing that this area, because it's just a little spindly appendage, is gonna be my weak spot. So I am working on, um, on freeing that area without um, pulling too hard, because I don't wanna rip it. The wax that we use is a is a microcrystalline wax. So it means what that means is that it is a um, a fairly hard wax. And we actually add some harder wax to it. So the wax that we get um, is this sort of deep chocolate brown. But if you look at the thin spots, you can see that it has a rosy hue. That rosy hue comes from um, from hard wax that we add to it. So it makes it really good for sculpting things like this, because. Um, because it's hard and it doesn't have, uh, it doesn't, it takes detail really well and then doesn't, it's, uh, doesn't soften too readily after, after you've cast it. Oops. Ta-da! So I'm gonna throw out these last bits, um, but what you can see in the alginate is really beautiful detail of skin. And then what you can see in the wax is equally beautiful detail of skin and we got really great detail with very little um, bubbling. You can see that there's a little alginate in here and so I'm going to work on cleaning that out now. Know that the metal tools will scar the wax. So as I'm cleaning with these little tools, I'm trying not to touch the wax itself, but just sort of pick, pick, picking. Because the alginate is a bit rubbery, you can kind of pull and tear the alginate without touching the wax itself. I like to do this when the alginate is still this kind of spongy wet. Um, if you wait too long after you divest the alginate to pick out all these little areas, the alginate turns sort of chalky and harder. It does shrink a little, which is maybe good, but also it, um, I find that it can adhere a bit. So this is a good time to do this. I'm gonna pause the video here and um, you, can, I'll, you can meet me back here when it's a bit cleaner.